So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you a beginner guide to everything that you need to know as a new player in Torchlight Infinite. So in the previous beta I played over 100 hours and here is the most important information summarized in just one single video. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then let's move over to the first ever steps that you will need to do in Torchlight Infinite and it is creating your character. So selecting your starting build is vital in this game. The starting class aka the character determines your strengths and weaknesses. But still you can customize your character to unique playstyle as you unlock more in-depth customization. Currently there are 5 character classes to choose from. In this guide I will give you a super quick overview of all of them. But I would strongly recommend to watch my Torchlight Infinite class guide video where I explain every single class in depth and much more. So then with that said, the first class is called Berserker Ri Han, and he is a fast paced melee based warrior. He excels at close range and devastating up close AOE attacks. Then the second class is called Divine Shot Karuno. This character relies on ranged attacks to deal damage while forcing enemies to dodge bullet projectiles on the map. This class is your typical gunner that unlike the Berserker, you will do most of your damage from the range while using different damage combos. Then the next one is called Frostfire Gamma. She is your typical mage class that is a dual wielding wizard which can launch powerful ice and fire attacks. Then the next one is called Spacetime Witness Yoga which is basically like a Wukong class from the League of Legends and he is basically like a martial artist that specializes in spacetime magic, seeking to exploit enemies by using sneaky and deadly attack combos. And then lastly we have the Commander Moto. This class is a summoner that utilizes minions that will fight by your side and do the most damage possible. If you choose to play this class, then the only way to do damage will be by summoning your minions, which then will do all the damage for you. So with all of this said, you will eventually try every character through new playthroughs in order to complete the achievements tied to each character. So don't spend too much time deciding which class you want to start with, because sooner or later you will have the option to play them all. And then lastly, before we move on, your starting class will come with a free hero trait, which is basically like your character's special ability. You can unlock more hero traits from the paid boon system and in-game achievements. To change your hero trait, it will require for you to create a new character. Traits are locked behind your character and cannot be changed mid-game. So then let's move over to the gameplay. And Torchlight Infinite is optimized for touchscreen controls, allowing you to freely move your character model using the on-screen joystick while traveling around the map. Objective markers are displayed on the map zone to assist with the navigation. Every zone will spawn enemy hordes that drop randomized loot important for gearing up. Warp points will allow you to move from one zone to another one while questing and exploring and eventually you will unlock more areas on your world map so you can easily fast travel between locations. Your main gameplay loop will consist of following the main storyline till you get enough gear to then choose to play the best endgame grinding spots and participate in more challenging dungeons. So then while we are talking about the gameplay, the biggest part are the skills and the way you upgrade them. There are 24 unique skill trees that offer more than 180 skills for character builds. So Torchlight Infinite has very in-depth customization. You gain skill slots as you acquire energy. Energy is earned by leveling up your character and equipping slash improving your gear. Make sure you eliminate all of the enemies on the map, so then you would get enough experience and loot to unlock more slots. Skills then can be further classified by their type. Support skills, active skills, passive skills and trigger skills. Skills can also be linked to each other. Active and passive skills are linked to support skills, while trigger skills can be linked to active and support skills. Identifying a support skill can be done by tapping on a skill icon and checking out the tag. Support skills will have support as a tag. As a new player, always pay attention to your LinkedIn support skills. You can potentially add utility to an active skill and increase the damage even more. So basically you can unlock or buy skills and then put different skills on top of skills. So like you can see, here we have a skill but the further we progress, we get to unlock more slots that we can slot in more skills which will all support our main skill in the middle. You can obtain skills by either completing quests that will let you choose skills as a reward or by visiting the skill shop at the hideout. So then let's move over to the next part of your character build and it is the talent panel. You can select up to 3 talent panels for your character. Talent panels are unlocked by leveling. 6 basic talents are available to choose from when starting and it's called the good of might, goddess of hunting, goddess of knowledge, god of war, goddess of darkness and god of machines. Each of these 6 basic talent panels 
contain three more advanced talent panels, which you can select once you unlock your second talent panel. Advanced talent panels contain more specialized stat buffs and sustainable bonuses once you've invested enough points into that panel. And then lastly, the third talent panel has no restrictions once you've selected all of your talents, but it's advised to stick to just one talent panel to focus on your intended build. You should pick your basic talent panel carefully by paying attention on the tags listed on the talent panel overview. For example, if you want your Frostfire character to be a pure spellcaster, you will want to check out Goddess of Knowledge to increase your int stat and spell potency slash mana. Under your selected talent panel, you can spend talent points, which are obtained from leveling up, to unlock more talent nodes. Talent nodes hold your micro talents, which buff your stats. Multiple talent points committed to a talent node can unlock the specific node. You can as well unlock a major talent node, if you invested enough talent points. Activated talent nodes can be reset using the forgotten points, which are obtained by the water of the forgotten. You can also reset for free before level 70. New players should stick to only a few nodes at a time, so you could enhance your specific build. All of this at the start may seem complicated, but believe me, the more you will play, the better you will get. In a quick summary, each talent will either way increase your damage or attack speed, depending on which one you select. So you will either way build your character to shoot faster or to do more damage, but fire at a slower rate. Lucky for you, I have made build guides for every single class, so check them out for more in-depth build. So then let's move over to one of the last big categories for Torchlight Infinite, and it is the gearing up system. So you can equip your gear by opening up your bag. 9 gear slots are available for each character. Enemies randomly drop gear on the map, so always pick up every bit of loot. As you progress further into the storyline and gain more levels, the enemies will also level up, and so does the dropped loot. Don't worry about immediately trying to get the best gear as a new player. Just be ready to replace your old gear with low item levels, which will be indicated as white and blue, with newer higher level items which are purple. A quick tip is that I would recommend to look for affixes aka stats that synergize with your character build, and usually you want to prioritize increasing your survival stat and energy shield for more survivability. So that's about it. And with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Torchlight Infinite topics or new player guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video, so take it easy, peace.